What's going on YouTube? Good to see you guys again. This is going to be another YouTube exclusive. The other night I was talking with Summoning Salt and uh, I asked them for permission if I could actually do a reaction video um, of the SMB3 Warpless progression video uh, for Mario 3. And uh, he said, of course. And the idea behind this was so that I could actually go along and tell you guys uh, from my perspective and my experience um, when going through this whole thing with him and like helping him out with uh, some of the dates and times. But not only that, but you know, where my mind was and my mindset at the same time. Best quality right there. I love the quality of that. So, so yeah, let's go ahead and jump right in. We're going to start the video over again. We're going to turn the volume up and then uh, we're going to take a look at uh, the SMB3 world record progression for Mario 3. Yeah. You guys ready? You guys ready? I'm ready. All right, let's go. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look. If you're given the task to beat Super Mario Bros. 3 as fast as possible. First of all, if anyone's questioning the quality of Summoning Salt's videos, like, this is really all he had to work with. If he wanted the accurate videos for the accurate things he was talking about, he had to use these quality of videos. How do you go about it? This run right here? Well, there's these things called warp whistles that you can pick up in World 1 and use to warp all the way to the last world, World yeah, 8. That's right. Doing this properly allows you to potentially beat the entire game in under 11 minutes. That's right. However, if we're to believe the hundreds nice of speedrunning experts in the YouTube comments are not section, nice, bro. then using warp whistles is cheating. Can I? So, okay, what I'm about beating this. Super Mario Bros. 3? Okay, yeah, so this run right here, this was definitely one of my 56s or 57s. One of my, one of my oldest runs, because as it was mentioned before, it's like my primary goal was to never pick anything up and just beat it as, as fast as possible without warp whistles. That's right, without the warp whistles. Summoning Salts presents. <laughs> the zoom in on the slide. Yeah, the clip. The world record for Super Mario Bros. 3 Warpless carries with it a reputation for merciless execution and luck. Eight worlds, lots of the luck. wide variety of levels, enemies, and obstacles lots that you must know exactly how to speed through. Patience is pushed to the limit as the player loses hundreds, or even thousands of runs to small mistakes or just simple misfortune. Mm -hmm. While the precision and persistence needed is enough to deter many from trying, some push past it. This is the story of the players who have gone through the challenging yet rewarding journey to obtain the <laughs> Super Mario Bros. 3 Warpless. Yeah, you think Warpless. it's rewarding. This is the world record progression of Super Mario Bros. 3 Warpless. Alright. I know that game! I've played that game before! Let's go back to 2010. Let's do it. That January, the first ever Games Done Quick event was held. Mm -hmm. Classic Games Done Quick. This is the first This is the first time I watched Classic Games Done Quick and it was my first one and it was the first thing I ever heard about. I never watched the entire thing, but it was the first time that I had learned about um, some other speedruns. I kind of knew about speedruns a little bit before, but this was like... You know, the first time I actually saw, like, Andrew G, it was the first time I saw a lot, a lot of other uh, runners. It was, like, it was an extremely iconic uh, marathon. What? What was that? <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen that <laughs> this event would later turn into Awesome Games Done Quick, the annual charity speedrunning marathon that raises millions of dollars. Right. Now, the reason I bring this up I was at that one. That was my first GDQ, this one right here. I was at this GDQ... Uh, this one was my first one. There's Sinister on the right, and then, oh man, everyone's there. Annual charity speedrunning marathon that raises millions of dollars. Now, the reason I bring this up is because the earliest known warpless speedrun of Super Mario Bros. 3 with video was played at this event. Mm -hmm. The runner's name was Freddy Anderson, who had the any percent world record at this point as well. This run won't be covered in great detail, but the most important concept to understand about it is the P-meter. Super Mario Bros. 3 essentially revolves around the P-meter. When Mario is running on the ground, the meter starts to fill up, and when he's in the air, it decreases. When it's filled all the way, Mario's running speed drastically increases to a speed called P-Speed. Runners struggle to figure out ways to build up P-Speed in as many levels as possible. Mm -hmm. You have to run on the ground for as long as you can, strategically slow down and speed up in certain places, and time your jumps just right. Yeah, Anderson one, two, that the level. strategies needed to build up the P-Meter effectively throughout the game. Look at look at how Freddy's playing right now. He plays like a, a weird claw grip, but he doesn't he only does the claw grip uh, for this level as something 
That's something I definitely remember before, like that claw grip. Also, the guy beside him on the right, I'm pretty sure that's Carcinogen SDA. The guy who does all the Resident Evil stuff. I swear to God, that's Carcinogen right there. And as a result, he spent much of the time either walking or running without P-Speed. For example, this is Anderson's playthrough of 3-2. He's never able to build up the P-Meter at the start of the level, and instead has to slowly leap his way across the water and the blocks above it. In a modern speedrun, the player the can just barely build it up at the start by waiting and running <laughs> on each platform. The P-Speed yeah, earned from this lets the player crazy. fly through the level without even touching the water. Anderson's lack of P-Speed, on top of a few deaths, helped result in an end time of around an hour and three minutes. That's right. While it was a solid enough run, it wasn't held to the same level of optimization as other speedruns at the time. It so a good example of the run that he's doing right now, and it's and it's weird because a lot of the people uh, for Speed Demos Archive was a part of the classic games done quick. They were kind of like the same thing. And uh, there was no published run on SDA of Warpless. But I guess Freddie Anderson was like, hey, I'm going to come from Sweden to do this. And I don't know. I think he still did any percent, but I don't. I don't know why, War I don't know where Warpless came, it just came out of nowhere. He's just like, oh, I'll beat it without using the Warp Whistles, why not? It's possible that Anderson himself had a faster run, but his Games Done Quick run appears to be the only one with survival. That's it, it's the only one he ever did. Regardless, one guy thought he had what it took to beat his time. Not me. Mitch Flower Power. Ooh. <laughs> Look at my top tier strats Mitch jumping in the water. Mitch Warpless speedruns in 2010 with a specific goal in mind. He wanted to beat Anderson's run and get it published on speed demo. My primary goal ever, even before I started speedrunning Mario 3, my primary goal was like, when I discovered speed demos in high school, I was like, I want to be on that website. I thought it was like the most official, top tier gaming website of all time. I didn't even know Twin Galaxy existed, but I mean, Twin Galaxy is a meme right now. <laughs> Twin Galaxy is so jank. But yeah, my my main goal, and that, that, that's that's how Salt was able to quote that, is because that's what I told him when he asked me. It's like all I cared about was getting on SDA so I could be like an official gamer, like an official speedrunner. Speed Demos Archive was more or less the center of speedrunning back then. Nice Runners frame would submit room. high quality recordings of their world record speedruns, and after they were verified, they would be posted on. I used to I used to scour this website even through college and high school. I'd waste so much of my life just watching non-stop speedruns just non-stop that's all i did the site for the world to see in 2010 mitch was able to beat anderson's time with a 59 minute run right but it was ultimately rejected from speed Dumble's archive that's right not because it was cheated or anything like that but because the verifiers felt that it just wasn't good enough uh, so a good a funny thing behind that is uh i think it was two gdqs ago i was at the bar in the in the hotel lobby i was at the bar and just having a couple drinks and somebody approached me and that person was one of the original verifiers that declined the run he still had the email and showed it to me of him with his comments and rejecting the run after all that time he approached me and was like yeah i was one of the people that rejected it and, and look at you now he's like he's like what up <laughs> what up it was crazy to, to see that as andrew g would say it's too slow that was one other component of Speed Demo's archive. Mm -hmm. Your run needed to look visually impressive. Mm -hmm. And while it probably would have looked great to a normal viewer, Speed Demo's archive verifiers were used to watching a higher level of gameplay. Right. So they told Mitch to come back and do it again faster. And that's exactly what- What the f- Look at me, I look like a skeleton. So they... Look at me. Look at the difference here. And why am I wearing a Bowser hat on the Colbert show? Why would I wear the Bowser? Why wouldn't I wear the Mario? I told Mitch to come back and do it again faster. Get out and of that's here. That's exactly what he did. 2016 on September 21st, 2010, Mitch. Mitch completed a run that would be verified on Speed Demo's archive a few months later. The time was 55 minutes and 47 seconds. Look at that quality. Let's that's VHS quality right here, my 55. So for anyone who doesn't know, I I'm sure there's a lot of people on YouTube who don't know this. I used to have to record my runs on a VHS because I didn't have a good computer. I was so broke, man. I had no money. I was like the biggest deadbeat in the world. And so what the only thing that I could financially invest in was a VHS DVD dubbing system. It was one system. I'm sure some of you guys have seen it. It was like this thick. It was like this long. Okay. And it's like, well, why didn't you just record on DVD? 
I would have. However, the only problem is, is that when I was playing on a CRT and recorded on DVD, I created input lag. There was input lag for some reason on the DVD mode. So I had to play it on VHS, record it on a VHS, dub it over to a DVD. I had to find a computer, put the DVD in the computer, and then I had to directly torrent it to uh, speed demos. Um, and what I did for my very first run, the run that got rejected, the um, the 59 minute run, the one that got rejected, I actually sent the VHS tape in the mail. I just recorded it on a VHS. It, it, there was probably like an hour of recording before the run that I probably should have specified, but I just VHS tape and I just sent it in the mail. That's, <laughs> that's all I did. I didn't know, if, like, you know, for the first week or two, I was like, did it even show up? Like what? It, and they rejected it anyways. I waited like months, but it's good because we got the fifty-five. Take a look. Let's take a look at our the fifty-five. In Super Mario Bros. Three, each off. There it is, nine twenty-one, two thousand and ten. Right. So I started speedrunning Mario Three, I guess, around two thousand nine, early two thousand ten or so. For a new set of challenges that the player must overcome, as Mitch made his way through World One. Also, also, I saw somebody in my chat named Beast. Beast, this is one of the runs that you watched. This was in the, the apartment before Chad, though. One of my first streams and stuff is when I... I think I did this before I started streaming. And this was like my big... I think this run got the tunnel. You can see his expertise of controlling the P-meter. He would run on ledges, just barely fill it up all the yeah. way, and then have P-speed as he flew through the air. As important as the levels are, however, there's another incredibly important part to Mario 3 speedruns. The Overworld Hammer Brothers. Yup. These guys move from space to space after you complete a level or die. Mm -hmm. If you run into them, you fight them to pick up whatever item they have. Yep. Sometimes, like here in World 1, you- What a surprise! Movement of 2! I wouldn't expect anything less from my speedruns! ...have no choice but to fight the bro and are forced to pick up the star that he always has. Okay, okay, this is really cool. So a lot of you guys know from my speedruns that where the Hammer Brother was sitting was a position where I would get a mushroom. This run, we had no idea at this point that that power-up not only would be there, but you would save time by getting that power-up. That's how, you know, a 5547, that's how underdeveloped uh, this game still was at this point. But it was to thought to be overdeveloped. Like, we thought we were doing, you know, really good. But this 5547, I was still kind of alone. Karu was just kind of sprouting out. Um, but other than that, there wasn't, I didn't have much uh, with me in the community here. And then there's situations like World 2. There's two Hammer Brothers here. Ugh. One of them has a music box, mm -hmm. which stops Hammer Bros from moving across the map for a bit. And one of them has a hammer, which yep. is used to break blocks on the overworld map. <laughs> look at this. Look at my warpless position here. Anyone who's watched my streams know that this setup is like the worst setup in the, <laughs> the world. Let's get playing certain levels. Since you don't necessarily need to pick up the music box here, it can be ideal to avoid fighting this Hammer Brother by navigating around him on the map, because each additional Hammer Bro fight takes 10 to 15 seconds. I still fight- I still fight the Hammer Brother like the same way, right? As a- like, you can- you can really si However, still see- Sometimes Mitch couldn't tell which Hammer Bro was which, and sometimes they were in his way regardless. In this particular run, the Hammer Bro with the music box was up in the corner. Since Mitch moved around the bottom of the map, he was able to avoid it, fight the hammer bro with the hammer, and finish the world. Worlds 3 through 5 can be summarized as fighting some hammer brothers, skipping others, and flying through levels as much as you can. With all the overworld action, it's sometimes hard to appreciate the crazy Still do it the same way, guys. Themselves. Over 10 years. Slower than often. I don't do that anymore, okay? I've got- I've learned from my mistakes. I think I've become a better Mario player. I can at least confidently cool. say I don't do this. The ability to build up peace speed while trying to avoid <laughs> touching any enemies <laughs> is remarkable. When I when I came up with that strategy idea for that level for my speedruns for like safety and consistency, like I thought this was like the most top tier idea because it used to be not grabbing the star and it would be like very scary to do this section. So I thought maybe grabbing the star was like the best thing like I'd ever done. Also, uh, does anyone see that this power up right here? What does that look like to you? What the heck is that? That does not look like a mushroom. Since Mitch did most of this now it does. small Mario. Touching any enemy would have killed him. Mm -hmm. World 6 featured a bit of a strange moment. Mitch <laughs> was flying through the world as normal, and then suddenly turned around and backtrack all the way to the mushroom house to pick up a hammer. It would have been faster if I just didn't hammer kill the boss. Suit. 
<laughs> you might think that this had something to do with manipulating the RNG, or it saved him time somehow. But no, he just forgot to pick it up initially and had to go back and get it. I did. I remember I Chad was was in the room with me while I was doing this run, um, and it was like I messed up big time. World Seven features a bit of everything. Mitch had been fighting several Hammer Brothers in the previous worlds to pick up items like P wings to fly over levels. Uh, not, not even a clip, guys. Not even a clip. Like this was the strategy. Clouds to skip levels and even. Dude, for eleven years we've clouded seven four. Can you guys see that? For 11 years, we've been clouding 7-4. That level has not been played in Warpless for over 11 years. The occasional invincibility star. Oh, Here's water battle. What a items surprise. Here in World 7 to skip his way through many of the levels. Look at that strategy, okay? He like, a bunch of I flew over just to fly left. Like, the strat we use now, you just jump and fly straight. Is... These items here in World 7 to skip his way through many of the levels. Crazy. And finally, there's World 8. And most of it is actually on the team side. There's several auto-scrolling levels where you simply have to wait for the screen to move to the end of the stage. But eventually, Mitch came to the hands. These five boxes on the overworld map, or specifically these three, make up the hands in World 8. When Mario moves over one, there's a 50-50 chance that a hand will appear and pull him down into a 15-20 to 20 second stage that must be beaten. Given that there's three chances for a hand to pull you down, this means that 12.5% of the time, you'll be able to pass by without getting pulled down at all. It's called getting no hands. Working out the probabilities, you'll find that 3 eighths of the time, you'll get one hand, losing 15 to 20 seconds, and 3 eighths of the time, you'll get two hands, losing 35 to 40 seconds. And of course, another eighth of the time, you'll get all three hands and lose around a minute. Mitch got two hands in this run, which lost him some time, but since it was at the very end of an hour long run, he really didn't mind all that much. After a few more tricky stages and a couple of auto So what what summoning salts summarizing in um in you know his his script there with what he was saying was when he asked me about the hands essentially what I was saying to him and he got it right but essentially what I was saying was that the hands at that point in this speedrunning thing it was never a thing I I never even thought like of course I was like oh if I get past all three hands like this is crazy of course, I thought that, but that was never the objective, right? The objective was to have as good a run as I possibly can, and then whatever happens with the hands happens, and you're cool with it. It was there was never there was never a reset here or reset there. All the resets in these speedruns always took place pretty much in World One and Two, and then after that, it was like a it was a run. It was weird how speedrunning was. Scrollers, Mitch had made it to the last level. The fight with Bowser normally involves waiting for him to jump and break the blocks below. This takes quite a bit of time, but remember that hammer suit that Mitch picked up in World 6? The Bowser fight is why he picked it up in the first place. Hammers do an incredible amount of damage to Bowser. It turned a fight that would have dragged on and on into this. <laughs> all in all, this was quite an impressive run for the time. Impressive enough that Speed Demos Archive decided to publish it on their website. Mm -hmm. Mitch didn't die a single time, and showed off some really fast strategies. It's also worth noting that instead of playing on an actual NES, Mitch played on the Wii Virtual Console port of Super Mario Bros. 3. Just keep that in mind for later. Yeah. One thing that was crystal clear after Mitch pulled off this run was the fact that Super Mario Bros. 3 Warpless was a brutal category. Wandering Hammer Brothers and the Hands could add dozens of seconds onto your run from bad luck alone. Not to mention the P-Speed strategies in level after level of an hour long run. It was intimidating to try running it, and very few people did back then. Mitch would end up playing the category some more a year later, and ended up beating his own record by about 45 seconds. There's not too much that was different about it. The improvements can be generalized into Mitch simply getting better at the game over that period of time. There were fewer mistakes overall, and the run was slightly smoother. What these two runs essentially did. Yeah, you however, see, see how now I'm see I, now I'm realizing that the star strategy that I had mentioned earlier is like is a no good thing. So we go to the Mitch is the top yeah. runner of Super Mario Bros. Three Warpless. A couple of months then passed. We're in early 2012, which is this when is a website called story. Speedruns Live was in its heyday. Speedruns Live was the headquarters of speedrun races. 
Two or more players could connect to a server and have a race room keep track of the total time as they race to beat their game as fast as possible. On March 29th, 2012, two players joined a race room for Super Mario Bros. 3 to do a worthless race. The first was Karua. He was a Mario 3 speedrunner from France with a personal best not far from Mitch's world record. The second racer was Black Hasu. He was a Mario 3 speedrunner from Japan, and it's very hard to find information about him today. It is. It's Black so Hasu hard. Black Hasu was live streaming his side of the race so anybody could watch. The runners began their race, and even though Black Hasu was playing on the Famicom version, which had slower transitions between levels, he pulled ahead early on. By the time the runners were in World 3, Karua decided to just forfeit the race and watch Black Hasu's run from his livestream. What would then occur over the better part of the next hour was remarkable. Black Hasu would finish the run with an end time of 54.46, right. a new world record. The only problem is that the video for this run doesn't seem to exist anywhere today. No. People were watching this run as it was being- Dude, do you know how, do you know how, like, poorly something like that would hold up in today's video times right now no video no proof right and it's like even though like people did it live through time it would eventually like just kind of die out so i i didn't know this race went on and i'd never seen this video but i was always told about the video but i'd never seen it right so people even back then i would get dms like that my world record was lost that somebody beat it i'd never heard of black Asu, right and i scoured the internet for videos and i never saw it so i i was always i was always annoyed that i never got to watch the the actual video that broke the record and uh it, it was it was very frustrating because i would have really much have liked uh to have watched this um but there was uh there was a a japanese video streaming or video log site um and i don't know if any of you guys remember i think it was called nico nico right and that's where a lot of black Asu uh, videos took place um, and that's where a lot of Japanese runners stuff took place and you needed specific logins and I didn't understand how to translate at the time and so I bet if I went there it would probably be there but yeah that's that's all the known that's all the known stuff that's it being played live including Karua so we do know that it happened all those years ago we know what happened evidence we have now however <laughs> is the speedruns live race results page which shows a race from March 29th 2012, with Karua finishing in second place with a forfeit, and Black Hasu winning with a time of 54.46. Accounts from runners who saw this run describe a more modern approach to the run as a whole. Mitch's 55 minute runs treated each level as an individual level, where the goal is to simply beat each one as fast as possible. This usually involved just staying a small Mario. Black Hasu, on the other hand, backed up to look at the game as a whole. He decided to pick up the fire flower more often. Now he did have to slow down to pick it up, but it definitely had its benefits. It let him save 4 seconds on each of the boom boom fights throughout the game by killing them with fire, as well as letting him eat- Right, so this route, this route was always a very interesting thing in the early stages of Mario Brothers 3. Um, one of the biggest things that I had with the runners that use fire flower, and it was always like a weird uh, transition between me and like other runners who use fire flower, is that Overall, grabbing the Fire Flower, as clearly proven in runs today, is definitely faster. But when I'd watch the speedrunners get the Fire Flower, they would always end up doing a bunch of strategies much slower than if you were just small Mario. So you get the big time saves, but you always lose time from being big and doing different things. So Mario 3 went through this like super confusing phase where like on paper, in theory, grabbing the Fire Flowers are definitely faster, but it was never being proven to be faster because I would not use Fire Flower and, and stay with the records. And then obviously, consistency kind of pushed it. Once we all became very con consistent, um, then we started to really see the power of the Fire Flower. And obviously, the record, 5446, clearly showed the Fire Flower has mad potential. It's really cool. You can use Fire in the other levels to clear enemies and ultimately Ooh, get he almost faster. got shot. Of course, since the video for this run doesn't exist, people weren't able to see these strats in action until the next world record. Karua's 5434 from May 2012, an improvement of 12 seconds. He picked up fire in World 1, which he tried to hold on to as long as he could. Of course, the fire flower route was still really new here, so there definitely were a few rough patches. That's it's pretty much what Summoning Saul just said was what I was explaining. Yeah, those are like those are like the rough patches that we went through. Also, remember I mentioned I didn't know about uh, Black Asu, 
Uh, Karu is 54-34 was the first time I had heard that somebody had actually beat my 5504 or whatever it was. I had no idea. I was really bummed out because I didn't even know Karu I didn't even know anyone was trying it. I just woke up one day and I had heard that my record was broken and it was really bummed me out. Also, he saved 17.8 seconds in World 2. I mean, what happened in his previous run? I mean, are we speed running here? What's going on? That's okay, I've been there before. I hadn't used splits at this time yet, though, so I'm sure tons of my splits were messed up. He got hit and lost fire in 3-9, 4-6, and 5-7. So that's... The fire flower back up as soon as he could each time. Exactly what I was talking about, He also about, yeah. died in World 6, and instead of getting right back <laughs> into the level... That is, just... That's so funny, like, speedrunning is so underdeveloped right now that that we don't even know that there's, like, a pocket there. <laughs> like, he... He had to have thought that he could he get out. Died in World Look, he six. kept going. <laughs> instead of getting right back into the level, he just sat there in the overworld. God, we... He, d he had to throw in his controller, right? Something. Yeah, he thought the run was dead, but decided to just keep going for the heck of it. Kuril was also able to show off a pretty fast 7-1 clip. So now that you guys know with the with with the way subpixel manipulations work, when Karua got first try stand clip there, right? Karua was also able to show off a pretty fast. Actually, I don't think he got first clip. try. I think that was second Instead try. Instead of playing through 7-1 as normal, which is a pretty long stage, it's possible to clip into the wall and ceiling right at the start of the level and skip straight to the end. I was now fully... not only does this trick require you to jump in the perfect location. But your subpixel position also needs to be just right for the clip to even have a chance of working. Subpixels define Mario's position on a scale smaller than the pixel, and it's not usually possible to control them. Kuro was able to get it on yes, his third it try, which yeah. was pretty good considering that the previous world record of video footage, Mitch's 5504, took six tries. And then, after getting no hands in World 8, Kuro closed out a run 12 seconds faster than Black Hasu's lost record. All in right. all, while there were many unpolished sections, the use of Fire Flower throughout the run significantly helped. Definitely. Fire Flower was, was potential. The Fire Flower strats had potential. How far would people be able to take them? Mitch decided to test that question less than a month later. Just three weeks after Karua's world record, Mitch fired right back with a 40 second improvement, a time of 53.53. While Mitch too- That was- that 53, he said that was a 40 second improvement on the world record, but that was over a minute improvement on, on my PB. So that like, that was a minute faster than, than myself. He was using the fire strats. His methodology was slightly different. Karua's strategy was to pick up fire and then hold onto it as long as he could. Mitch's strategy was to pick up items and then intentionally lose them to damage boost through specific sections. He did this repeatedly throughout the run. Of the olden days. See that that's how I knew about the, the P speed strategy in 2-2. That's that's how not new this is, right? But it, it was always that you had the damage boost to get the P speed. You can never just get it. Like using the fire flower to kill the Goomba is so incredibly difficult to get P speed. When you damage boost through enemies, your frame counter is like still counting up for running, but you're not moving. So you can build P speed in smaller areas. Just like that, yeah. That was actually a mistake, I think. Fancier P-Speed strategies, especially in World 7, helped him gain more time over Karua. In 7-3, for example, he would run right up to an enemy or ledge, pixels away from getting hit or falling off. It's exactly what he needed to build up P-Speed each time. By this point, in late 2012, a friendly rivalry between Mitch and Karua had developed. Friendly. These guys traded the world record back and forth multiple times throughout 2012. The next four world records, however, would all be obtained by Karua. Over the course of about six months, Karua would take the world record from a 53-53 down to a 53-02. Oh, two. One key improvement was the fire kill on Bowser. Picking up the hammer suit in World 6 to bust out right before fighting Bowser... For anyone on YouTube who doesn't know the information right now about what we're doing, um, exactly 13 seconds it takes to go up, enter the Mushroom House, grab the hammer suit, come back down, 13 seconds exactly. How much time does uh, Fire Kill on Bowser versus Hammer Kill save? It's about six seconds. So grabbing the hammer suit was always a big time loss for us, but it was like a security, it was the security reasons, right? It used to be the strategy. 
because killing him with just four hammers was much faster than having to spam him with more than 30 fireballs. And easier. Much easier. However, because you have to go out of your way to pick up the hammer suit in World 6 from a mushroom house, you end up gaining several seconds from just hanging on the fire in World 8 to kill Bowser. Kurua's item routing also got a bit more strategic. In Stage 7-2, for example, runners used to use a P-Wing, a valuable item, to fly over the first section. Kurua switched to an Invincibility Star, which he had sitting in his inventory anyway. And probably the most important part of these four runs is that in one of them, Kurua got what's known as the Early Hammer. Early Hammer results from a series of incredibly lucky events in the World 2 overworld map. This is a diagram of World 2. There are two Hammer Brothers. One starts here and has a music box. We'll be ignoring him for now. The second one starts here and has a hammer, which can break down these barriers to help you move to get to new areas on the map sooner. Hammer Brothers move one space after each level you complete or die in, and the direction they move is random. If they move on top of a level, or on top of a- <laughs> I, think, I think Summoning Salt explains this twice in this video. <clears throat> another Hammer Brother, then they'll move an additional time until they reach an open spot on the map. Normally this I think he's out retouching. The player will move through 2-1, 2-2, the fortress, <clears throat> up past 2-3, through the sun level, either up past 2-4 or down past 2-5, and then the pyramid level, before finally reaching the ending airship. The player picks up the hammer somewhere in this rectangle on the map, mm -hmm. and the hammer is then used in World 4 to break this barrier and skip past the fortress. Yep. Keep in mind though, the direction the hammer brother moves after each level is random. So theoretically, this exact series of moves could happen. He moves up here after 2-1, up here after 2-2, over and across 2-4 after the fortress since he can't stop on the level itself, and then down and to the left after 2-3. Instead of reaching him somewhere in this rectangle, you reach him on this space, which is before the sun level. So you could collect the hammer here, go down here and break the block with it, and then skip both the sun level and 2-5. Unfortunately, the odds in the Hammer Brother making the exact moves you need to reach him after 2-3 mm -hmm. are around 5%. Yep. If everything does work, you end up gaining around 45 seconds from skipping the two levels. But keep in mind that by using the Hammer in World 2, you don't have it for World 4. Mm -hmm. So you can- that is, that is the most common misconception of, of early Hammer, especially for people- Especially for people who don't- who, who are just learning early Hammer for the first time. I get so many people coming to my stream. How much time does early hammer save? It's like, well, on the split in World 2, you see it save one minute, but then you see me lose 25 seconds in World 4. But if the person learning about early hammer doesn't stay until I get to World 4, then then they just they just think that early hammer is just like this big time save, and it's just that's it. You can't break the block to skip the fortress, that's right? And you lose half a minute by having mm -hmm. to play through it. Still, it's a pretty nice net gain of 15 seconds overall if you're lucky enough to get it. But this was only scratching the surface of the potential of Early Hammer. Mitch's next world record, a 52-59, would demonstrate another layer. Since the Hammer Brothers are usually off screen, and you can't see where- Okay, just just that alone was uh, very nice to see. I'm very glad that he, he clipped that. So just that alone, for me to beat my 50, what was for my own, what was my own time? It was the 53, uh, 53 oh something. It took me- 1,444 attempts on top to beat it because I had just gotten live split. This is my this is the first time I have live split. So for me to beat my 53 and get a 52-59, it took me almost 1,500 attempts. So a lot of people ask me about my attempt counter. I've changed so many different files on my live splits left and right. Like these are just individuals all the time. Would demonstrate another layer. Since the Hammer Brothers are usually off screen and you can't see where they move, it can be tricky to tell exactly how close you are to getting an early hammer. You have no idea. So, Mitch came up with an idea. Since the Hammer Brother is forced to move one space after you die, he would repeatedly die in 2-3 to try to get the Hammer Brother to come across, so you could ultimately avoid playing the level and instead get an early hammer that would skip three levels instead of just two. He'd just force the Hammer Brother to move, and hope that he moved in the right directions to come across 2-3. We call this early hammer grind. Getting him to come over in just one death, or a one death early hammer, mm -hmm. saves well over a minute in World 2, netting the player over half a minute overall. Mm -hmm. But sometimes it could take a few more deaths again to come over. Mm -hmm. Getting yeah. a two death or better early hammer has been calculated at about one to 2% likely, 
and after four deaths, you end up losing as much time as the trick saves and are forced to reset. You, you never want to die more. This than created four. a bit of an ideological divide between the top two runners of the game, Mitch and Karua. Mitch had the world record with the 52-59, and he had a habit of getting a ton of runs to World 2 and just dying over and over to try for early hammer. He obviously lost a ton of runs here, but would occasionally get one on a super good pace as a result. Karua, on the other hand, wasn't a huge fan of dying for an early hammer, and instead just took as many runs as he could past World 2. If he happened to run into the hammer bro after- I will, I will admit, like, with this whole divide between the red thing, I did waste so much time grinding for early hammer. This game had so much more potential beyond the early hammer, it's just we- there was so much we didn't know about the game at the time that every time we're in a, a specific spot with this game, we always think we're almost near the cap of what's possible. And like, you guys have seen that in so many of Summoning Salt's videos and so many other speed games is that w all the runners, we always think we're in the top. You never think you can go anymore. So you come up with these stupid time saves. Like I wasted so much time on early hammers. The 2-3, then he took it. But it usually didn't save as much time as when Mitch would get it before 2-3. So which strategy was better? Mitch got his 52-59 with early hammer in May 2013, but Karua beat it by 2 seconds without early hammer 4 months later. Where did he make up more than 30 seconds saved by early hammer? Well, part of it was by cleaning up mistakes from Mitch's run. Mitch lost fire in world 4 of his run, and couldn't pick it back up until close to the end of world 5. So he lost a bunch of time from not having fire for the boom boom fights, and having to use slower strategies in other stages. Do you guys find it interesting that when you watch these little mistakes, you can see like so many years later how cleaned up like everything is and like how different strategies, like a perfect example and was like, you guys have seen, you know, mistakes in this level is very common. You'll still make mistakes. Get back up and but like this one, for example, whenever I grab the fire flower, I always end up keeping P speed after this is because I understand so much more. If you can see here, I lose P speed five. right here. So, right. he lost a bunch Even of time slower. from not having fire for the boom boom fights, and having to use slower strategies in other stages. Karua was also able to avoid fighting a hammer brother that Mitch had to fight in World 4, must and got nice. the 7-1 clip in 5 tries versus Mitch's 8. Oh, yeah, must These be time nice. saves <laughs> added up to just a bit more than the approximately 40 seconds that Mitch's 1 death early hammer saved, and since both runners got one hand in World 8, Karua was able to finish just 2 seconds ahead of Mitch with a 52-57. Since Karu was able to get so many more runs past World 2, he had more opportunity to get cleaner runs with smoother later worlds. Right. Just two weeks later though, Mitch two was weeks. able to beat Karua back. He didn't have the chance to get early hammer this run, but he made up a bunch of time elsewhere. So for anyone wondering, we are now at 3,000 attempts for Warpless like six years ago. <laughs> and that was after the first few years before I started using live splits. So the attempt counters are just so stupid how much I've played this game. It's so dumb. As you can see by his splits, he fell over a minute behind his early hammer record after World 2, mm -hmm. but made up more than half of it in World 4 because he didn't have to play the Fortress. He made up more time in World 5 because he was able to hold on to Fire Mario, then pulled ahead after a very strong World 7. I'm minus 1.5 after World 7. Like a green split. World 8 was more <laughs> of the same. Cleaning up mistakes from his previous run, and then getting no hands. A 52-23 without early hammer. Mitch sums it up best. Beat my PB by <laughs> but wait a second. What did I even <laughs> say there? I didn't even say anything. What the heck was that? Hold on. Three without early hammer. Mitch sums it up best. Beat my PB by <laughs> but wait a second. Remember how I mentioned before that Mitch and Karua both did their runs on Wii Virtual Console? Oh, we did, Remember you did how I mention said to that. keep it in mind for later? Yeah. Well, not long after Mitch got a 52-23, runners discovered that playing on the Virtual Console version of Super Mario Bros. 3 was actually losing them about 15 seconds in each run. Bullcrap! See, Wii Virtual Console games actually run about half a percent slower than NES games. It's not really noticeable when playing the game normally, but over the course of an hour-long speedrun, the time adds up drastically. So, Mitch switched to playing on an NES, and got- Look at this stream setup, like, my splits are, like, overhanging, fucking ugly, man, what are these? You think Back you're a streamer here? Runs, this time with a 15 second advantage. Kind of streamer. February 19th, 2014. Mitch was- Did you guys hear the way that Summoning Salt just said February? He's like, 
February. Hold Dude. on. We got to go back to it. February 19th, <laughs> 2014. Mitch was doing Super Mario Bros. 3 Warpless attempts and happened to get a 2 death early hammer. Keep in mind, the odds in getting a 2 death or better early hammer is less than 2%, so this was a big opportunity for Mitch. He was less 48 seconds ahead after World 2. Look at that. As always with early hammer, time. Salt, was it hard? Summoning Salt, was it hard to like catch video where I like wasn't smoking? Like, you obviously don't want me smoking in your videos, but like. I probably had three cigarettes during that. During this run, I probably had three cigarettes. I I can imagine. I think I, because I was nervous. Yeah, you had to edit around the smoking, and me probably getting like pissed off. <laughs> yeah. Okay. He was lost in World Four because of having to play the fortress. Yeah. But after that, he just picked up time in each split. This was turning into a really really nice run. And by the time he entered World 7, he was over half a minute ahead. But the biggest obstacle in World 7 was right at the start. The 7-1 clip. Come on! Go! Get it! How am I keeping my cool? Okay, there we go. That's the Mitch I know. Go! Bullshit, man. I've wasted so much time. <laughs> Ten tries. Still to this day, reactions, still to this day. Freaking bullcrap. Damn hurt, clips. Luckily for Mitch, the rest of the world was great, so we didn't lose a huge amount of time overall. Oh, I don't know what these splits are. What's going on? <laughs> so, now Mitch had just one focus. The hands. He was over half a minute ahead, and had the luxury of some wiggle room on the hands. Getting three hands would eliminate any chance at the record, but getting two hands or better would make it possible. 46 minutes into the run, it was all coming down to this. Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> I did the bump strat, did you guys hear? So, you bump on the overworld. What I normally like to do is I normally like to press up. I press up when I come out of the pipe and Mario bumps, and then I instantly hold left, and then I get the fastest movements possible across the hands and then I hold up and then move up. It's a slight time loss, but when you're on a pace like this and you're moving across the hands, it's easy to like be scared and like mess up your movements and you'll lose more time. So as you you can hear me bump and that it's intentional and it's so I can move across the hands without having any problems. It was all coming out. Right, listen. listen. Oh my God. Oh my God. Okay, I, I for the record, I I everyone, oh for the God, record. I got it. <laughs> I got it. Yeah. You can't beat this run. I, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. I have to disclaimer here, okay? When I said that, I was including myself, okay? I also thought that I couldn't beat this. That's the most, like, rude thing a speedrunner could say. I'm guilty, I'm guilty. We've all done it. All right, but you can't you can't beat it. Oh this run can't god. be beaten. Oh my you god really <laughs> The chad laugh Look at the splits. Okay, I included like, myself on not being able to beat There's this. There's nothing you could do. But you can't do it You can't possibly get seven well, one first Mitch try himself. <laughs> you could not beat this run Mitch and Kuro had battled for years, but this run was the ultimate one early hammer no hands multiplying the odds of those two tricks alone we're looking at no better than 1 in 400 odds of getting a run this good. And that, of course, doesn't factor in the odds in getting good luck with all of the Hammer Brothers and all the execution you must nail in each stage of the game. And that's why it stood, and stood, and stood. <laughs> For one month. <laughs> Alright, I'm guilty, okay? Alright, I'm guilty. We've all been there. Okay, I forgot about the 7-1. I was super high on the fact that I got no hands. Okay, I was scared and nervous. <laughs> Yo, the Chad laugh? I don't even know what we're laughing later, at. It was beaten by a run that did not get early hammer, by a runner that was neither Karua nor Mitch. 
Russian speedrunner outside Lutz beat Mitch's so-called unbeatable run by exactly one second. How did he do it? I love how Salt throws in the little like jab there. Mitch is so called because like that's what I said. Dude, we deserve it. I there's been so many speedruns where I've seen a lot of people say like, and I'm sure summoning salt experiences it the most by making these videos, but we all it's been in almost every like speed game and community where it's just like unbeatable runs and everything. Um but yeah, before we before we dive into the outside Lutz uh portion of the video. There were some, there were slight controversies between me and Outside Lutz, and none of them were uh, overly recorded. And it essentially involved me. I didn't like that he played on keyboard. I was never a huge fan of keyboard players. I never liked that keyboard players were allowed to officially run on retro consoles, mainly because you can have different keys do different things, or some keys do the same things. And I just never liked it, but I did trust Outside Lutz, but I didn't like that he played on keyboard. Well, the most important thing to realize is that Mitch's run really wasn't all that perfect. That's right. He was excited in the moment, which is why he said it was unbeatable. That's right. See? But, he has example, my- See? Salt has my back! You see? Thank you, Salt. Thank you very the much. The 10th try clip in 7-1 sent him back 20 seconds versus outside Lutz's first try clip. Oh, must that be right nice! That there nearly eliminated the advantage gained from early hammer. He also got some sketchy Hammer Brother movements, which ultimately led to a couple of extra Hammer Brother fights. Is this World 5? Is this World 5? What a son of a bitch. <laughs> what a surprise. Still to this day, World 5 is the biggest piece of garbage. Improving sections like that led to Outside Lutz and Karua five months later, both improving Mitch's run by a few seconds without the early hammer. But in May 2015, surprised. Mitch blew them out of the water once more with an amazing- What? Say that again? Without the early hammer. <laughs> But in May of 2015, Mitch blew them out of the water once more with an amazing 5128, once again without early hammer. One notable improvement from this run was the reintroduction of the hammer suit into the route. Mitch figured out that by picking it up in stage 7-8 and preserving P-Speed throughout the rest of the level, you could then use it to kill Bowser quickly at the end and potentially pick up a couple of seconds over the Fire Flower. This was very difficult to do fast enough to save any time at all, so certain runners opted to just stick with the Fire Flower the whole way. I was alone for but a while. But Mitch used the hammer strats in this run, and was able to get the first Warpless World Record in the year 2015. Speaking of 2015, that was the year that another Warpless runner began to threaten <laughs> the world record, Cujo. I, lo Cujo I love you, Cujo. Cujo played categories of Super Mario Bros. 3 throughout 2014 and 2015. His Warpless personal best got lower and lower. 54 minutes, 53 minutes, then 52 minutes, and he slowly turned into a world record contender. Kujo eventually began doing warpless world record attempts, but he had- <laughs> Dude, the typical, yes, I'm dropping frames, no, it's not you message in the top left corner. That's like the best, like, old school Twitch. Now people are like, I don't know who's losing frames. Nobody cares. Like, nobody had- <laughs> had one problem. His hand luck in World 8 was just awful. Awful. And that's the scary thing about running Warpless, guys. That's the scary thing. <sighs> you can say to yourself, oh, I just need one chance at the hands. Give me a chance at the hands, right? You get that chance and you get all three hands. You get another chance. You get all three hands. You can get all three hands consistently in a row for months. It's like, there's no, there's nowhere on paper, there's nowhere in the code where the game has to give you no hands. And that's what's so scary about this run. This is, Nothing has to go your way in this category. This category doesn't care about you. Boom. <laughs> Every time. He eventually started highlighting and listing all the world record paced runs he had that died the bad hand look at the very <laughs> 12, end. 12, 13, The number 14. reached 18 before finally, one day, it happened. Holy shit. So like, months months he's trying for these hands for months do you know how nervous he is right now and like obviously i've experienced i know exactly how nervous he is but this game is so difficult on the level of concentration and controlling physical and mental concentration and that it's just like he's so nervous right now and it's like i can't explain it months he's waited for this opportunity for months being it's crazy it's this game all you Mario have to do now is lock down and focus he just had to not get hit by anything and make it to the end. Yeah. And...
Now, a lot of people have always said, like, why, in a situation like this, why not just complete the run, right? Why not just finish? It, he can't, man. He loses over 40 seconds of not fire-killing Bowser over it. Plus, he loses time for not killing the Boom Boom, and he lost time for taking damage, right? <clears throat> and he's, what, PB 22 seconds ahead. His PB probably got a hand. So he's a little over 40 seconds. He might have been able to, like, tie. Oh, my God. The run died because he got hit in the very last auto scroller before Bowser. <laughs> Thankfully for Kujo, though, <clears throat> a few months later, he would get another chance after a run with first try 7 1 clip. The hands were nice to him, and Kujo was finally able to get his first Warpless World record. Yes! I love the excitement, man. Fucking world record! Kujo's run only beat the world record by one second. But it would stand a lot longer than Mitch's record. Mitch's 5128 stood for four months, from May 2015 to September 2015. Kujo beat it that September, and entering the year 2017, his 5127 was still the world record. However, in early 2017, Kurua decided to come back to. <laughs> yeah, the, because it's Mario 3, Kurua's got like the math and math. <laughs> Time waits for no one. Speedrunning Super Mario Bros. 3 Warpless. Kuro hadn't achieved a Warpless World Record since 2014, but he had a goal he wanted to accomplish. I never even Not realized that. Not only did he that. want to beat Kujo's 5127, but he wanted to take it a step further. He wanted a 50 minute time. That would require taking nearly half a minute off the world record. Could that be done? The potential was definitely there, but Kuro wanted some more help to get it. So he went into the lab to figure out different routes he could take to save some more time. The biggest thing he decided on was to finally start using the 7-9 clips. I think that's a fantastic idea, just not for me. I think I think everyone should do the 7-9 clips except for me, of course. Because they're bullcrap and they never work. They're garbage. Uh, for anyone wondering, during this entire time, this is when I was doing Mario Maker 1. Uh, this is... Uh, this is when I was getting involved, a little bit earlier, this is when I was getting involved with like, you know, hanging out with uh, Pooh Bear, Barb, um, you know, and a bunch of the other Mario Maker guys. This is when we were doing a lot of the, like, the Panga Mario Maker stuff. So I was out of the Mario, I was out of the Mario 3 scene for almost two years, I think. One or two years. <laughs> yeah, it's like adding four more hits. 7 was to use the cloud to skip over stage 7-9 straight to the fortress. This is because 7-9 is normally a super slow stage. You've got to go up, down, left, and right, all the way through this maze-like level. The new route Kurua used was a bit different. He was not going to use the cloud for 7-9, and instead use it in the World 8 Fortress. He was just going to play through 7-9, and in order to make it fast enough to make it worth it, he had to use these clips into the walls. There were two different routes of doing these clips. A 4-clip route that saved up to 16 seconds, and a 2-clip route that saved up to 8 seconds where you could also pick up a fire flower if you needed it. Keep in mind, each of these clips required both a pixel perfect jump and lucky subpixel positioning. Each missed clip costs about 4 seconds, and given that runners could sometimes spend a dozen tries on a clip, this was really risky to go for. He would need to get the 2 risk? clips There's in no 4 risk total involved. tries to break even, or the 4 clips in 8 tries. But in February 2017, Kurua had to run 17 seconds ahead of his personal best into World 7. When he came to 7-9, he decided to go for the clips but was only going to do the two clip version because he needed to pick up a fire flower. And the clips didn't go too well. It took him five tries to get the two clips, ending with a net loss of four seconds. This run, however, would go on to get no hands in World 8 and be a new world record of 5120, 21 seconds away from his goal. That's still a, a good time. A That's later, still fantastic. Kuro was on a run that was very close. So that beat me. At, the, at this time, that, that 5120, he was, I was now in third for Warpless. I was back in third place for Warpless. Close after World 7. The 7-9 clips hadn't done him any favors. <clears throat> it took him eight tries to get the four clips, meaning he broke even on them. Mm -hmm. But he did have a few seconds to save in World 8 if everything went He got perfect. no hands again, guys. Then, in the last level... This clip normally was much easier than the other clips. You had to get into the gap as Big Mario, then get ejected out of the wall to the other side. But he missed it first try, and had to waste a couple of seconds doing it again. No big deal, right? No.
It's the worst. world record. <clears throat> well, shoot. It was okay though. Just three days later, Kuruo got a run with a post 2-3 early hammer. The type that skips two levels and saves 15 seconds overall. Bad hammer brother luck in the middle worlds forced him to use a fancy strategy that he had developed in 6-10 to pick up fire and skip having to use a P-wing in 6-9. The 7-9 clip started off poorly. With the so essentially what Summoning Salt's saying there, and a lot of you guys have watched my Warpless run, so you would understand what I'm saying, is that what happened to Karua was <clears throat> he got the music box in, in World 2 with his post, he got bad luck in World 4, so he used the music box, and then he got bad luck in World 5, so he used the music box again, <clears throat> right? So he didn't have the P-Wing, right? And you guys know that the way the Warpless route works now is that we intentionally actually skip those now, so that we can do wall jump, but we don't do 610 because 610 is slower. We do 6-9 wall jump. Um, and that's why that's where the development of well, not at this time, obviously not in 2017, it was 2020 or 2019 when we came up with it, was uh no, I think it was 2020, earlier this year, right? <clears throat> the whole use getting the P-Wing in 5-1 so that you can music box four and five and then do the wall jump. So uh, in this instance, Karua unwillingly was forced to do that by the luck, but he also didn't do 5-1 because. He got the music box in World 2. First clip coming third try. But then... He got 3-1-1, one, one, right? Yeah. 3-1-1. One, one. Six tries overall, meaning a net gain of 8 seconds for Karua. He then got a hand in World 8, but the time buffer he had still allowed for a 51-13 world record. 14 seconds from his goal. Including this world record, Karua then had a streak of 20 runs that made it to World 8 on record pace that got at least one hand. He didn't highlight them like Kujo did, but it did lead to a couple of months without any new records. And then came June 6, 2017. So right now in time, for, for uh, perspective, I think at this point in time, I think I was running um, Dram World. I was running Dram World 1 and 2 <clears throat> while Karua was grinding, um, and I was watching his streams all the time. He, he would stream in the morning, <clears throat> and as you guys know, like, I don't even know when I go to bed, right? So, um, yeah, and he would stream in the morning, and I'd, and I'd watch him every morning. So I was waiting for this 50 minute. This is really good, man. He's, he kept going and going. Like any other run. He fell behind against his early hammer <clears throat> run, and then made up most of the time in World 4. And then, in the World 6 Fortress... I don't want to see it! That's... No! Free eight seconds. Get. <sighs> he clipped into the ground. Massive time. If he was a pixel too low, he would have hit the spikes below. If he was a pixel too high, he would have just landed normally. Clipping like this, however, skipped the room before the boss and ejected him right where he needed to be. Skips the elevator. Saving seven seconds. Massive. World Massive. six ended up being a gold split. Gold. Yeah. It was the fastest Kuro had ever completed World six. It definitely. He was ahead of the world <clears throat> record. Mm -hmm. Then he had this happen in seven one. And then, he had this happen in 7-9. I think he cops out, right? Because it's he's then doing he so well, yeah. Eight. After months of grinding for a 50, Kuruo was on sub-51 pace after the hands for the first time ever. A few stages later, his journey finally came to an end. That's so incredible, guys. That run, I don't know if I watched it live, but that run was so absolutely incredible, okay? Just to put it in context of how good this run is, I mean, it's it's outdated, right? There's there's a lots of different strategies and there's lots of different routes to give you a much higher chance of, you know, getting a sub-50. Nobody except for me has beaten that time yet. <clears throat> and up until a couple months ago, I needed... Like, my early hammer run was the only run that beat that run. So since 2017, I'm the only person who's beaten this run without an early hammer, and I only did so a couple months ago. That's it. One month ago. That's it. That's how powerful this run... <laughs> Lucky, I mean, powerful uh, that run was. <laughs> the first 50 in Super Mario Bros. 3 Warpless history. Kuroa had accomplished his goal. His journey started by beating Black Hasu back in 2012 with a 
and culminated with a 50 57 in That's June such a good 2017. Run. This is Not best long after speed this run, run, Carrillo retired from speedrunning. He said that it's possible he'll make a return someday, but regardless, his legacy from Super Mario Bros. 3 speedrunning is honorable. World record after world record in every category, and developing a long lasting rivalry with Mitch, the <clears> only <throat> other runner to consistently match his <clears throat> level of play. But Mitch wasn't done yet. He wanted to get the world record back. Getting another sub 51 wasn't going to. So this is also 2017 right now. This is when I finished with uh, Dram World 1 and 2, kind of done with the Mario Maker. This was my actual uh, return, <laughs> 14,527. And these splits are different than the Warpless splits I use now. Um, but anyways, this is, this is yeah, as soon as I moved to Utah, I had just moved to Utah. I moved out of my my apartment. You know, my my whole life had like changed. And then I finally got back into Mario 3. I was doing... Uh, a little bit of attempts before I moved, but essentially this was me coming back uh, after uh, Kaizo ROM hacks, Super Mario World ROM hacks, um, Mario Maker, and, and a lot of that stuff. It's going to be easy. So he decided to do attempts every single day starting in January 2018 until he broke the record. And nice since mistake. he's Mitch, he was going to grind for early hammer. He wanted the time save. He lost run after run in World 2 as he grinded for early hammer but he did eventually see results. In March, he got his first personal best in almost a year with it. That was that was March 10th, 2018. I remember that Mario day. That's a, that day was special because I can't believe on Mario day I did it. 5102. So close. <laughs> so close. I'm not sweating enough so the runs He not was headed on the right track, just a few seconds away from Karua's world record. It was inevitable that the record would be his soon. But nobody expected the run that would come on March 24th, 2018. 24th. 14 days later. Crazy. It, it, it's crazy the way speedrunning works. Is like it, it, When I got the 51 and 2, I was like, oh man, I gotta grind for another like three months, right? Because traditionally with Mario 3, that's how it works. That's, the, that's how it always worked. Every time you got a PB or a good run or no hands... It's safe to assume that you're going to have to wait another month or two before you get that opportunity again. So 14 days later, that's pretty nice. 14 days of early hammer grind is a long time. Oh my god, dude. World 2, stop. Yeah, World 2. Give it up. Yeah, scratch that head, Mitch. Uh, for RTA runners, it saves no time. It started with a post 2-3. Without even without even knowing what the person asked, I can tell you right now they asked me if the sliding strat is faster for one two. I know that's what they asked me. Three early hammer on one two. <laughs> the splits on the left compare against his fifty one oh two, and the splits on the right compare against Karua's world record. He had a very smooth world three and world four, a gold split in world five. That's so dumb. The one world five that works. What a surprise! That's Bullshit. Yeah, dumb After time save, six, yeah. He was 16 seconds ahead of Karua's world record. Then came the 7-1 clip. <laughs> yeah, that's the scary. Yeah, that's the He was so far ahead of Karua at this point that since he had the hammer suit, he decided to avoid messing with the 7-9 clips. Yeah, I'm not so messing with that crap. So he went back to the old strategy of using a cloud to skip 7-9 and right. instead playing the fortress in World 8. Yeah, I'm not doing that this crap. This was some careful strategy for Mitch. Here's why. That was the best decision I probably made. If I did 7-9, I'd be back in the freaking gullies where I belong. Back in the... the Bronze Age. Why? He was 43 seconds ahead after World 7, but it's misleading. Part of that lead was from skipping stage 7-9. He was going to lose 40 to 45 seconds in World 8 from having to play the Fortress. But, since he had the Hammer Suit while Karua did not, he was going to gain 9 or 10 seconds back from being able to use it in World 8. He also had a few seconds to save from mistakes that Karua made. That meant he was on pace for somewhere around a 50-43. And that- Which, by the way, a 50-43 is better than the non-early Hammer 50-49 right now. And I was on early hammer, so... It was a ridiculous pace. But he needed to play really well. And on this run more than any other, he needed to get no hands. I almost lose it here, look! This was it. What are you this doing? I almost lost it! 51. He made his way through auto-scrollers and other stages. He went through 8-1. And then he entered 8-2. I 
I should have thrown a hammer there. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Devastating. This shot right here is supposed to take out the sun. It missed pixels by away. pixels. What a surprise. After getting a bad pattern from the sun <laughs> after that, it ended up being right where he needed to land, and he lost the hammer suit. I still think about that shot. Any advantage he had over Kuro was wiped away. He was neck and neck. It was going to be close. Did I do it? I'm wearing a Spider-Man t-shirt, look! I don't think I did it. As Spider-Man helped me. I did it. I did it, oh my god. Finally. I hadn't... I hadn't had a Warpless World Record since Cujo beat mine. That was the last time I had a Warpless Record. So that was... Three years? 50-55. And that is where the World Record stands today. Oh, that is it? That's a guarantee that's not where it's going to stand in the future. Summoning Salt is right. It's not. A few months after his 50-55, Mitch discovered possibly the most revolutionary trick that Mario 3 Warpless has ever seen. It's possible to manipulate the game into giving you an early hammer every single <laughs> run. <laughs> it's so hard, though. I mean, it works, and it, like, it makes sense. It's so dumb, though. It's so dumb. Getting an early hammer is determined by where the Hammer Brothers moved after each level. The game determines which direction they move based on the exact frame you end the level on. For example, if you ended on frame 6523, this guy will move up, but if you ended a frame later, he'll move a different direction instead. It's possible to actually get a deathless early hammer with perfect movements after every level. They move toward each other, then get caught on top of each other and can't separate until they're across stage 2-3. So, what Mitch did was create a tool assisted speedrun, which lets him use save states, slow down, and other tools to let him end levels on the exact frames he needs to. This tool assisted speedrun ends each level in World 2 on the frame necessary for the Hammer Brothers to move closer together and eventually on top of each other. The end result is a no death early hammer. What the player can then do is play this tool assisted speedrun back while they're doing their speedrun and try to time the end of each level in World 2 with the tasks. They usually have only one frame or a sixtieth of a second to time each of these, or sometimes a couple of frames. Obviously, it's not easy to get all these timings correctly in a run. As it's still pretty new, no world records have been accomplished yet with the manipulation. But, Mitch has had some success with it in the future. I can tell I was recording this. I was, I was doing these speedruns in the wintertime because my skin gets all messed up from the stupid... Dude, Salt Lake's messed up, man. I don't understand it. The water irritates my skin so much during the wintertime. It's like the salts from the snow or some crap. When you salt the sea, it gets... I don't even know what it is, man. But there's something weird about the wintertime in Utah. Don't, don't come here in the wintertime. Doesn't make any sense. The attempts he's done. Yeah, baby! Woo! And got it. This type of early hammer provides a 30 to 35 second time save over no early hammer. This game still has a lot of history in front of it. So, questions must be asked. Will the rivalry between Kuro and Mitch resume in the future? I got Probably it. Probably not. I unfortunately. think I got it. Oh my god, I got it. That was the unbeatable. Will a new challenger rise up? New challenges yeah! have risen up. And just how low is the record going to go? 5036. Wait and see. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Fantastic video. Absolutely loved that video, Summoning Salt. Absolutely fantastic. Thank you so much for allowing me to review it. Pause here for the YouTube. Yeah, on it, honestly, the, the, dude, that was just, that video was so good. Um, anyone watching this video on my YouTube channel, go and uh, check out Summoning Salt. Go give him a subscription. Dude, he, he does videos like every three weeks. Sometimes they take like two months or something. But as you can see, he's got Mario Kart Wii history of Ultra Shortcut. He's got Adventure 2 Battle with Sonic. And he's got many, many other games. He's got some Zelda stuff. He's got Metro stuff. You guys go and go and check him out. Um, 
yeah, I hope everyone enjoyed. I hope you guys uh, enjoyed my reactions and, and some of the, you know, behind the scenes of what was going on in my life and things that are going on at the time. You know, all the things that Summoning Salt didn't want to make this video one and a half hours long. Um, yeah, I thought I could give you guys some of the insight of all the things that's going on.